Hello once again, it's Mr. Pete, the original YouTube shop teacher. Welcome back, and this is short subject number 43, entitled, What is a Hermaphrodite Caliper? So, this is an R-rated video. I do not want any children watching it. It'll be long, and at the end there'll be extra credit, and I'll be talking about my personal experience with a hermaphrodite. So be sure and watch that, but if it interests you, but it's not for everybody. These calipers are also called odd leg calipers or sometimes morphe calipers. I haven't heard that much, but I did read that in a book. It is only a semi precision instrument, like all calipers and dividers. It's not considered truly precision. I'll show you some different ways to use it. They are not expensive, they are still available, probably lots of used ones out there if you are interested. And, uh, it, but it's not something you're going to use very often. There are so many other tools, I believe, that are better for the job than the hermaphrodite. But let's first start with some craziness and silliness and the definition of what a hermaphrodite really is and... I'll expound on other things as we go along. Yeah, definitions and uh, examples. So, here we go. Yes, the caliper and the dividers got married, and when they had a baby, it was a hermaphrodite caliper. Let's start out with a definition of a hermaphrodite. It's an organism having both male and female organs, or other, you know what, characteristics either abnormally or in the case of some organisms as the natural condition. For instance, worms and snails are hermaphrodites. They don't have to go very far to find a date. Are there any human hermaphrodites? Yes, but very rare. And in extra credit, I will talk about the hermaphrodite that I met at the carnival. That's extra credit at the end. Lots of still pictures at the end as well. Before I start my little Greek mythology lesson here, I need to tell you who Aphrodite and Hermes is. Aphrodite was the ancient Greek goddess of love and beauty. Hermes is considered the herald of messengers of the gods. He is also considered the protector of travelers, thieves, merchants and orators. Why am I telling you that? So what is the origin of the hermaphrodite in Greek mythology? Well, legend has it that Hermaphroditus, a beautiful youth, was the son of Hermes and Aphrodite. The nymph of the fountain, Salmachus, I believe, became enamored of him and entreated the gods that she might be united with him forever. The gods said, well, fine, we can do that. And the result was the formation of half a man and half a woman by the name of Hermaphroditus. So that's where the half and half came from. And we're applying this, of course, to a caliper. So what are hermaphrodite calipers? They are semi-precision tools that are half calipers and half dividers. Hermaphrodite calipers are used to scribe lines parallel to the workpiece edge, locating and testing centers, and other layout work. Calipers measure the distance between two opposing sides of an object. They make inside, outside, depth, or step measurements according to their type. Well, I have in my shop four hermaphrodite calipers. Too large, too small. They make them in other sizes as well. Brown and Sharp, Lufkin, Sterrett, everybody made them, and I'll show you some catalog pictures at the end. But it's simply an outside caliper leg and a divider that is adjustable, can be, can be taken out and sharpened, moved in and out, and this is called a firm joint or a firmer joint caliper. They are quite stiff, but it could be used in this configuration as well. Either way. And this is a bent leg caliper and a straight leg. Well, what is this caliper, you ask? Is that a hermaphrodite caliper? No, it is not. Tell me in the comments, what is this caliper called? Or used for? 
Okay, here are several uses for the hermaphrodite caliper. Sometimes we want to find the center. Now there's lots of ways of doing this, and this certainly isn't the best way. In fact, the easiest way to find the center is to face it off on the lathe, or to use a bell type of uh, center punch to find the center, or we have all kinds of other center finders, don't we? In any shop, and they aren't particularly expensive. You've seen me use these over and over in the past, but let's take a look how we would use this. Let's find the center of this round stock. It's about one and one eighth, so I have set the caliper for approximately nine sixteenths by the same method. And all that we'll do here is scribe it in several different rotations, like that. And where the lines intersect, of course, is the center. Now my layout die flaked off a little bit on me. So the lines are a little wider. The die is wet, as you can see. But that shows up real well, doesn't it? <laughs> so that's how to find the center of round stock, if you would want to. But again, there are many other better methods, in my opinion. Okay, let's use the hermaphrodite caliper to find the center of this bar of stock, inch and a quarter wide. Doesn't matter how thick it is. Remember, this is a firmer joint, so it pretty much stays in place as you set it. And this is inch and a quarter wide, so half of that is five-eighths. And the caliper should be set like this. Put the bent leg up against the edge of the rule and set it at 5H, which I have already done. Also, it helps for this type of uh, scribing to have the, the scribe or the point up a little bit higher than the bent leg. Like that. And then simply take it, I've already put some layout die on there, try to hold it perpendicular and uniform as you make the scribe line. You can either turn the work or turn the caliper and do that. And the line is pretty much in the middle. If you end up with two lines like railroad tracks, the true center will be between the tracks. But I did have this set very accurately, so there we have a nice center line that would be ready to uh, mark. Well, let's. Perhaps we'd mark it like this. Center punch it, and it can be drilled. That didn't show up, did it? Or did it? Yeah. Got to get the light just right. Now let's lay out a line that is one inch from this flange. And I put some dye on here so that you can see it. And I've set this calipers for uh, one inch and we could simply drag it like this. And there, there's our layout line and in this case I should have lowered the pointer a little bit or it pushed up on me is what happened as I did that. It wasn't tight enough. So now they are equal and it would be a little bit easier to do. Well, that concludes the lesson. It was really a short lesson, other than the introductory. But uh, stick around if you want to see the extra credit if you're over 18. So let's start that now. And remember, tons of still pictures and definitions and so on at the end. I always thought the meaning of words and the, uh, how they were derived was interesting. That's why I told you a little story about... Hermaphroditus. By the way, he was incredibly beautiful, and that's why that nymph fell in love with him. Absolutely gorgeous, I guess, according to the legend. All right, extra credit begins right now. Well, how did I first find out about the hermaphrodite? Actually, it was in a carnival, and they didn't use the word hermaphrodite. They talked about half man and half woman. So the sideshows had these huge canvas colorful 
pictures greatly exaggerated of all the freaks that were inside and they sometimes called it a freak show, sometimes called it a side show. But the carnival set up in Peru, Illinois, three blocks from my house, my brother and I at the age of 10 or so would go down there and spend the whole day, often without any money. We didn't have a penny, but we would just hang around and look at things and have a blast, but we sure would have had more fun, I think, with money. But this particular day, uh, we had uh, a nickel or a dime each. So as we walked down the midway, we we're looking at these posters. There's always a barker out there. You know what a barker is? Step right up, boys. See the tattooed man. You know, many things that are at Walmart now. See the sword swallower. See the half man, half woman. And of course, the poster depicted a person that was divided right here wearing ladies clothes on this side and man's clothes on that. Well we had to see what that's all about so thirsty as heck no place to get any water but uh, rather than spent, waste it on a soda we had to see the morphodite. So we went in there and we're watching the other ones too you know the sword swallow he would swallow a neon tube so you could see it here just some really awesome things but pretty much fake I think most of it. So finally they move you around, see, to these different, uh, I'm hesitant to use the word freak, uh, oddities. So here is somebody dressed up, again, half man, half woman, sitting on a straight back wooden chair, and he would talk to you a little bit, see, and uh, about his condition, and uh, he was born that way, or she, I don't know which, usually one side is dominant over the other, but... Uh, they didn't really show you anything, you know, we, we wanted to see the, the goods, if you will. Well, if you wanted to see the goods, you had to pay an extra nickel. You know, they were always ripping you off at a carnival. Anything to get that extra nickel or dime or quarter out of, out of you. So, uh, sure enough, they didn't care how old you were, we, but we had that extra nickel, I guess, hidden in our... My mom would put a little change purse in our pocket, you know, for our 10 or 15 cents, whatever it was. Because she, she would always say, there's lots of pickpockets at a carnival. You be careful. Be very careful. Don't, don't talk to any of them. You know, all of those little warnings that a mother would do. Of course, she didn't say, stay away from the carnival. She said, go and have a good time, I guess. We would have gone anyway. Because we were not supervised, as I've told you many other times. So anyway, uh, you gave them the nickel. And then you, you walked around the corner. It was all canvas, you know, temporary. And uh, the morphodite, hermaphrodite, sat down and unveiled, if you will. You know what I'm talking about. I'm not going to be graphic about it. And, but it was a pouting disappointment. But it left an impression right here. All right. Those were my wild days when I was 10 years old. Did you do anything crazy like that? You know, they don't have those shows anymore. Thank goodness. There is surgery that repairs a lot of that now, but it doesn't happen very often, but it is a birth defect. So that's my introduction to the hermaphrodite, which later I carried over to the Morphe caliper, odd leg caliper. I told you a little bit about that. If you like this video, give me a thumbs up and leave a comment, but no body comments. This is Mr. Pete, the... Uh, Patron of a freak show saying, so long for now.